Hey, 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 it's Evelyn and I am back with another video. And in this video, I wanted to talk about quiet luxury as it pertains to black women specifically. Now, I know you're probably like, Evelyn, you're not really a fashion channel and that's where the majority of this conversation has been coming from. I follow some of the fashion girlies, they've been having this conversation. And so anything to do with quiet luxury from an aesthetic point of view, logos versus non-logos, I, I really don't care. What would you wanna wear? And I, and I think there are people who are much, um, much more well versed in the fashion world and that conversation as for, in regards to quiet luxury than I am. But if you've been on my channel before, if you're subscribed, you know that I have done videos about black women in luxury in the past. I have a video specifically called The Truth About Black Women in Luxury. I have videos um, before it was a trend about creating your own luxury. So when this topic of quiet luxury came about, I was like, I need to put my own Evelyn spin on it, right? I need to I need to have a dialogue with my ladies about what I think about quiet luxury, the term, not necessarily the fashion aesthetic. And it's so interesting that this is like now a trending topic because I remember years ago having a conversation with one of my best friends, like one of my closest friends, and we were having this conversation about luxury that can be seen and luxury that can't be seen. And so when I think about quiet luxury, to me, if I'm not talking about fashion specifically in logos versus non-logos or old money, like I, that's a whole different conversation that's laced with lots of troublesome uh, origins. But if I think about the phrase in itself, right, like just the, the word quiet luxury, I really think about it's the difference between luxury that is that can be seen or recognized and luxury that is just for self that can't be seen. Right. And y'all know I want to put my own spin on this. OK, so I, I think about and if I, I'll link to all the videos that I've done before um, to address my views on luxury, but I kind of reiterate this. If you think about the technical definition of luxury, it focuses a lot on ease. I personally think that black women, when it comes to luxury, when it comes to femininity, when it comes to soft life, you name it, it is all a desire, a reconnection to a life of ease or a first time life of ease. And so to me, luxury is no different. The challenge here is that typically when we say luxury, people automatically think of luxury fashion brands or they think of physical things. And in this case, I'm talking about luxury that goes beyond that, right? And I wanted to do this video because um, I follow an Instagram account of a woman who is married and she is a mother of four and she's a stay-at-home mom and she also has a nanny and a housekeeper. She also takes herself out on dates. She also purchases luxury, all these things. And it is amazing to me. She is a black woman. It is amazing to me the amount of pushback she gets because of her lifestyle. I've also followed a woman, I wish I could remember her name, who is a stay-at-home wife, meaning she does not work and she does not have children. I have seen videos go viral of you know black women having nannies, and the pushback that comes from that. And so here's the thesis of my of this whole video is there seems to be a a segment of people who are totally content with black women enjoying luxury as long as it's visible. As long as it's about consumerism of 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 products, as long as it's about fashion houses, as long as it's about bags, makeup. And here's the thing, I have no issue with that. Y'all know I love I love some good luxury makeup, right? Like that is, <laughs> that's not my issue. I think we should be able to do that. What I really think is we should be able to do whatever we want. But here, here's the thing that is shocking to me is that a lot of times I have seen, I'm not going to say this is the majority of the time because I don't know the majority of people on planet earth. Um, I'm, I'm not going to say that this is across the board because I don't know this is across the board. But in the instances that I have seen, this is always shocking to me. It says sometimes the pushback on black women having these quiet luxuries, luxuries that you can't really see, luxuries that can't be worn, luxuries that can't be shown or shown off even, is that a lot of the pushback is coming from other black women. 
And my thesis is, you know, when it comes to quiet luxury, why can't we have that too? I'm not talking, again, this is not about the the fashion and the aesthetic and the old money, new money, trying to look wealthy, proximity to whiteness. None of that. This is not what my conversation is about. My conversation is about that luxury that no one can see that is just for you and your ease and enjoyment is equally as valid as luxury that other people can be like, oh, that's a nice bag and I know what bag that is or oh, that's a nice whatever. So I kind of I, I kind of want to walk through it like this, right? I think about there are luxury products, you know, bags, shoes, cars, um, you know, um, fashion, all that kind of stuff. But then there's luxury services and then there's luxury experiences, And then there's luxury even support for your personal growth and development. So let me give an example. I want to use myself an example. I right now, I I am on a an amazing personal development journey. And part of my part of my journey is embracing the forms of movement that I enjoy the most. So one of the forms that I started with was dance. And so right now I dance, I take ballet, I take jazz, I take African, I take Um, modern, which is Horton technique. I take a lot of different styles of dance. And this is not me going to like a gym that has a bar class. I'm talking about this is a dance studio specifically for adults. The investment that I make there is definitely more significant than if I was going to like a 24 hour fitness. And again, this is not necessarily about price point. However, it is something that if, if I never told anyone, if I never shared it on social media, nobody would ever be able to see. There is no ROI, financial ROI on that experience. The ROI on it for me is joy. So I invest much more than a person who has a, a gym membership would to do a form of dance that I enjoy, a form of movement that I enjoy. Recently, I've added a personal trainer who is training me in the sport of boxing okay this is a former professional boxer former champion all of these wonderful things he is a he is a significant investment here's the thing whether i'm talking about a house cleaning service whether i'm talking about a luxury lipstick a a luxury bag flying first class a candle a fragrance or even support like a a personal trainer or even my therapist right we deserve to have luxuries that nobody else can experience, right? And it is our choice on what that mix is. I, for one, you know, like I said, this is not about the fashion conversation. Personal style is personal style. And nobody's personal style is better or worse than anyone else's. Let me just put that out there. If you ask me, am I a person that you're going to see me in logos? Probably not. But that's my personal style. That has nothing to do with that. I think I'm better or worse or that than any other person. Conversely, somebody that wears logos probably doesn't think that they're better or worse than anybody else either. That is just their personal style. I like this bright pink red lips that I'm wearing. There are some people who would never wear this color. Does that mean that their style or my style is better or worse and things like that? No. And a lot of that has lots of cultural nuances that can be discussed. Similarly, when it comes to luxuries and creating or having things that bring ease by the definition or enjoyment that is also personal preference. Let me tell you, you know, there's a lot of videos talking about or floating around and people are talking about their, um, you know, their quiet luxuries, right? That are kind of outside of fashion, right? You know, kind of in this similar vein. And I kind of broke them up into four categories. There's services, there's products, obviously, and then there's like support and then there's experiences. And so think about this, right? Like I have a friend, let's, let's just go with experiences. I have a friend who loves to travel, and when she's tra- when she travels, she's like, let me just tell you right now, I'm a hotel snob. If it's got less than four stars, I'm not doing it. Right? Like that's her thing. She four and five stars are hotels. She is not a luxury car girl. She is not a luxury handbag girl. She don't even really wear makeup. But her whole thing is, I'm going to stay in a luxury hotel. Like that is that is her thing, right? You know, so, you know, whether it's you always fly first class, right? Whether it's you've decided that, you know what, I need TSA pre-check. 
I need clear, I need global entry, I need all of the things because your time is valuable to you and you want to give yourself the luxury of an ease of an experience, whether you want more leg room, right? You know, one of my things is I don't do layovers. The the unless I cannot avoid it, I will pay extra to not have a layover, right? Because I'm giving myself the luxury of ease and time. Okay. So when it comes to experiences, I think about my mother. My mother is someone who loves concerts. She loves plays. She loves shows. If she's not like in the first five rows, she don't want to go. <laughs> right. She's like, if I'm not in the front, then I can watch this on TV or I can watch this on YouTube. Right. And this is a woman who considers herself to be very frugal. This is a woman who will fly across the country to see her favorite artist or a favorite show that she wants to see. That is her own version of quiet life. Nobody can see that. No, you know, nobody can, can enjoy that with her. Like that is her. I mean, even, I mean, yes, they could buy their own ticket, but that is 100% for her. Same thing with my friend in the hotels, right? So when it comes to quiet luxury, you can have quiet luxury in experiences. For example, one of my quiet luxuries and 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 people can and here's the other thing people can agree or disagree it doesn't matter cuz it's your life is being an entrepreneur one of one of the things that i wanted was freedom over my time whether that was getting to decide what time i work, woke up every day whether that was getting to decide when and how long i took off whether that was deciding you know, oh, I'm not feeling amazing today, so I don't want to work today, whether it's I want to nap in the middle of the day, which I don't do often, right? But I, the freedom of time, right? That's That was an, a, something that was very high up on my values list for me. And so I took my life in a direction to give me the luxury of working for my own self. Now, someone may say, that doesn't really bother the, me that much and working for myself doesn't feel like a luxury. And two things can be true at the same time right? Does that make me better or worse than someone who isn't an entrepreneur? No, it just means we value different things. And so we make different decisions with how we want to live our life. But that's an experience, right? That's a luxury experience where I can go, vi- I can go fly and visit people for in the middle of the week and I can stay as long as I want to. You know, early this year, I went to go visit one of my best friends and my br- brand new godson. And I think he was three weeks old at the time. And when I went, you know, I was only supposed to be there for like three days. I got stuck for like another two, three days. And it was fine because I worked for myself and I didn't have to go and check in for work. I didn't have to use vacation days. I didn't have to do any of that. And that is a luxury that I have given myself is the luxury of that kind of work experience. Whereas someone else may say, you know what, I want the kind of experience flying first class or the kind of experience of sitting up, for, for, up front at a concert or maybe somebody wants to give themselves backstage passes, whatever the case may be. But then I want to move it over to luxury services and kind of take it back to the example that I talked about with, um, you know, the woman who had the nanny and the housekeeper and all that kind of stuff. It's like sometimes our collective experiences, particularly as African-American women over history, maybe not 100% present day, that there is this undercurrent of historical struggle and, you know, working a lot and then coming home and then tending to the house a lot and then having to cook and then all these different things. And there is nothing wrong with any of those things if you enjoy those things. I like to give myself the luxury of time to cook, right? Some people that is not a luxury to them, right? I mean, it's such a luxury to me that I turned it into my career, The thing is, when I see other black women challenging other black women about these intangible luxuries, I always wonder, what's that about, right? Like, why, why, why does that bother them? Why does that ruffle their feathers? I may even go so far as why is that triggering to some women to see someone not being exhausted not being burnt out, not being, um, you know, look like death ran over. You know, I have a good friend who is married, has four children, and they as a family have decided to homeschool all four, all four of their children since their children were born. And my friend, you know, made the decision that she's just not going to look like an exhausted, overworked mother, even though she 
and her husband homeschooled their children and their children at home all the time, whatever. She was like, one of her decisions about how she's going to make her life easier is that she was like, I'm not about to be this run down, exhausted martyr of a mother. Right. And that is a choice that she has made for her own ease and enjoyment, AKA the definition of luxury. And so here's the thing. When I was growing up, we had a housekeeper, right? So yes, do I know how to do my laundry and wash dishes and sweep them off the floor and vacuum and clean and all that kind of stuff? But who about to be on their hands and knees doing baseboards? Not me. (laughs) I'm just not gonna do it. And here's the thing. And if someone wants to do it or chooses to do it, we both are fine in our choice, right? And so I am a single woman with no children and I have housekeepers come in to clean my house. It's my choice. I did the math and I was like, wow, I'm spending X amount of hours a week cleaning my home. And when I added that up in a month, I was like, that's a lot of time that I could be use- I could be using doing something else and hand this off to someone who's probably doing it better than me anyway. And that is the luxury I've chosen to give myself, right? So when it comes to services, you know, whether, you know, whether it is someone having a nanny or a housekeeper or, um, you know, or going to spa appointments or getting their nails done. I mean, there's no, there's no right or wrong if somebody chooses to do their own nails or if someone wants to go get their nails done. It is a personal choice. But this idea that, that, a quiet luxury is just an aesthetic is bananas to me. B the thing that really kind of like grinds my gears is when I see black women giving other black women a hard time about making their life easier and more enjoyable. That is insanity to me. I am all for black women in America, especially because of what we've experienced general generationally to have a life of ease does that mean we don't you know do what we need to do to be self-sustaining adults no but every woman's situation is is different what every woman values as ease and as enjoyment is different and so you know this conversation about quiet luxury it just takes me back to you know even when i talked about allowing people to create luxury brands right? It's like, it's one thing to be like, okay, consuming luxury is another, you know, it's another thing also to allow people to create luxury brands. It's also another level to allow people to live luxurious lives without naysayers. And I think I'm particularly passionate about this subject because of what I do for a living. I basically teach people how to create high-end brands, um, you know, luxury client experiences and things like that. And I'm just like, yeah, I, I, if, if people knew what I invested in my therapist and my personal trainer and the ballet studio that I go to and all the things that I feel make my life easier and more enjoyable outside of the luxury makeup that I buy, people would probably be shocked, right? That is my preference, right? And so, I just, I just, I say all that to say that, you know, this conversation that keeps coming up, whether it's, you know, soft life, whether it's femininity, whether it's black women in luxury, and now whether it's black women in quiet luxury, what I really think it's rooted in, what I really, really think it's rooted in is not wanting to see black people, particularly black women, have a life of ease and enjoyment. I think that the narrative has been so beat into us, whether that's struggle love, whether that's struggle in the workplace, whether that's, you know, being underpaid, whether that's being super strong and not having support, whether that's being burnt out, whether that's being exhausted, whether that's, you know, um, making motherhood into martyrhood, like all of these different storylines, whether it's from our own people, whether it's from our own movies, whether it's from our own music, whether it's from our own TV shows, right? All there's, there's so many direct and indirect messages about some form of struggle associated with black women. And I'm just over it, right? You know, oh, I'm about to step on some toes. Let me tell you something. I think about the show scandal. Oh, I'm about to step on some toes. So if, if you love scandal, you might as well want to click off right here, right? But 
I've only seen a few episodes, but I've definitely seen clips on YouTube and I get the general storyline and there was more to it, obviously, than Fitz and Olivia. But I was like, in that storyline, like it really was about her being the side chick the whole time. And, you know, she's this main character and yet she was she was never the priority. She she took the the what some would consider morally corrupt route right sleeping with a married man and I was like we we got to see that on display and glorified romantic struggle whether it's movies about struggle love whether it's movies about struggling financially whether it's music about like like there's so many messages about struggle that when conversations come about about ease and softness and enjoyment and pleasure in association with black women it's almost like two like two polarizing extremes and that is what i think the problem is across the board that not only do are there some people outside of the african american culture who don't even know that that is what's happening in their brain which is why they are reacting the way they are to different things but it's even it's even in existence in our own culture. You know, I think about um, some of uh, some some influencers, some creators, some YouTubers, things like that, who, you know, started off camera in the bathroom and, you know, worked consistently and diligently on the platform for years. And at this point, some some people have been on, on here over a decade, myself included. Right. And some of these women, rightfully so, have created amazing careers, amazing brands, and their life has afforded them a certain level of luxury, whether that's luxury products, luxury experiences, luxury services, luxury support, whatever you want to name it. And the word that gets thrown at them is now they're unrelatable. And here's the thing. I watch people all the time who purchase things outside of my price point. And I don't necessarily view them as unrelatable. I either enjoy the content or I don't. It's not about, oh, I'm watching so I can purchase or have what you have. It's do I like their content or not? I love luxury makeup and that I watch a YouTuber where her favorite thing is dress store makeup. I'm never gonna buy her suggestions because that's not what I wanna buy, but I enjoy her content, right? And, you know, a lot of these, a lot of the commentary about them becoming unrelatable is about this new luxuriously lifestyle, how they're out of touch and all that. And it's like, is it that they're out of touch? This is their reality, right? So, so there's nothing wrong with that. Or is it that there's no longer this undercurrent of struggle? Listen, I didn't mean to go there, but I did. So, yeah, yeah, I, you know, this, I'm not going to make this video too long. I'm already at like 20 something minutes, but I, you know, I just wanted to come in and add my, my two cents, my three cents, my five cents to this dialogue around quiet luxury. And that is so much more than an aesthetic and we should allow people to have luxury services, um, luxury products, luxury experiences, luxury support, luxury lifestyle and build luxury brands, right? Which is what I help people do. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to kind of walk through some of the things that I do that is what I consider quiet luxury. Obviously, the luxury beauty is one nobody if if I don't tell you what's on my face, you have no idea that I have on a full face of luxury makeup right now, right? Okay, here's the thing. Let me tell you, one of the things that Evelyn will drop a coin on is food. Now, you know, you may be like, food is food. I I want it organic, right? I want it cage-free, free-range, hormone-free, steroid-free, antibiotic-free, grass-fed, hug 10 times a day. And is my grocery bill probably higher than a lot of people? Yes, part of that is with me being a chef and I'm just I'm just going to be I'm bouge when it comes. I want exotic oils. You know, I just did a um a Instagram story talking about like the different types of salts that I have, right? I think right now I like have 5 or 6. I want like 10 or 12, right? Like and again, some people might be like salt to salt. Not to me. It's a luxury. Y'all, I have my water delivered in glass where it has been bottled at the source. So, let me know that for a little bit. Most bottled water 
is collected and then it's moved to a water processing plant. The reason why I know this is because I almost worked in a water processing plant. Plus, with my chemical and environmental uh, engineering background, I used to work in like wastewater remediation, all this kind of stuff, whatever. When it comes to your average everyday water brands, the water is collected from wherever it's collected and then it's taken to a water processing plant and whatever. The kind of water that I get is bottled at the source in glass because we don't want leaching from toxic chemicals and even though there's bpa free plastic no so it comes in these five gallon glass jugs and i have it delivered and carried into my house and put up on a stand okay that's me i also have the i also a luxury to me is i love working with homeopathic holistic doctors herbalists things like that most of which do not take insurance or insurance does not cover right? So I pay them cash, right? That is a luxury I want to have is getting to determine my own form of healthcare, right? And wellness, right? So, you know, um, I think about um, just the way I run my day. I don't jump right into Mondays. I ease into Mondays. I don't work on Fridays, Saturdays, or Sundays, right? Um, So there's so many luxuries that I have candles, skincare. I mean, any kind of beauty to me is luxury because nobody can see it. (laughs) Nobody knows. Right. And, um, yeah, I mean, there's just so many different things, fragrance, hand lotion, you know, makeup brushes. There, there, there are so many different things. Here's the thing, even giving myself time to do this channel, which is a passion of mine, something that I enjoy as a hobby, outside of when I'm working, giving myself time to do this, the luxury of time, right? There's so many different things. So anyway, um, I could go on and on. I'm pretty sure if you're watching this video, you have seen several videos on the subject, but I wanted to add my two cents. I'm going to go now because it's starting to rain and you'll be able to hear it in the video. And this video is almost 30 minutes, but let me know in the comments below. What are your thoughts on my perspective on quiet luxury being things that you can enjoy that other people may maybe can't see or recognize or even benefit from right and that quiet luxury is more than an aesthetic and let me know what kind of quiet luxuries you have or look forward to in your life and i will see you in my next video peace